Hey folks, welcome back. We're at lesson two. Again, my name is Paul Abernathy. I'm the CEO of Electrical Code Academy and I'm an electrical code expert, but I'm also an NRA instructor and a avid gun collector. And I love teaching people about firearms. I am certified with the NRA as a certified instructor in both pistols and in home protection. And that's what we teach here in Northern Texas. In our home, we have what's called the Sim Den, which is a closed simulated range that really allows you to get immersed into situational awareness. Um, it has a lot of moving targets, uh, simulation, shoot or no shoot reactive. And we'd love to share that with you. Again, it's private only. We like to cater to families. We don't do more than six people and we do actual training in our own home. And so we welcome you into our home and we train with you about firearms, the safety of firearms. And basically we like to pick people who are nervous and scared of firearms and help embrace it and let them know that firearms are, are safe. And if you treat them with respect, they will protect you when needed, and we teach you how to uh, keep them ready at all times. And we also do courses where we actually go into your home and we will tell you where your vulnerable points are, how to set up your safe area, uh, and all those type of things are some of the things that we offer. Maybe you just want to come to our sim den and go up there and do some shooting scenarios, shoot no shoot situations, tactical situations. We got you covered. A lot of videos that give you a choice to determine whether or not you're going to fire or you're not. Okay, really neat simulator. Um, and it's the only one I know in the area. Uh, that's not to take the place of an actual range. But again, with the cost of shooting and again, dry fire training on a simulator uh, has many advantages over going to the range because the range won't let you move around the range, won't let you fire from the holster in many cases. And again, sometimes it's it's just not conducive to train those, those, those skills in order to remember that it's a perishable skill. It means if you don't train, whether it's dry fire training, uh, whether you have your own simulator, which we can help set up for you, um, or you, uh, there's things that you just can't do on a range that you can do in a simulator or in the comfort of your own home. Uh, getting familiar with your firearms. Now, before I get started, I'm going to give you an example of two firearms that we talk about in lesson one and carrying over here in lesson two. Today, we're really gonna talk about the ammo for these firearms, but I wanna make sure that you're aware of these and you understand that they are safe and they are not with any ammo in the facility. So this is a revolver. This happens to be a double action revolver. As you can see here, there is no rounds in it, okay? No um, cartridges in the cylinder. Uh, and so it is safe. And again, safe is considered downrange. So where I'm pointing downrange, there's nothing there that is considered safe when we point down range. It's all safe, okay? So we always treat a gun with respect, okay? So there's that one, and that is a revolver. And of course, here we have a semi-automatic. This happens to be a Glock 43, which just happens to be my personal carry. I love this little Glock. Uh, and the magazine, as you can see, is empty. And I'll open it for you so that you can see there's absolutely nothing in here. So it is safe. And we're just having it here in case we need to point as a prop to this firearm. Now, even though that's the case, it's a prop for our video. We treat it with respect. It's always downrange, okay? Always downrange. And we observe the 180 rule. 180, 180, all the way around, downrange is the safe zone to be in, okay? All right, wanted to get that out of the way before we got into any training. All right. So let's get into our training. We're in lesson two. Hopefully you watched lesson one. Lesson two talks about ammunition knowledge and we're gonna talk about some fundamentals of pistol shooting. Now, a lot of these we're gonna do in our sim den, but you're also gonna do some of these things obviously out on the range as well. So we'll point that out when we're talking about them. Uh, but we treat our sim den uh, very much the same as the range. Now I'm an RSO, a range safety officer. So when you're in our simulator, I want to treat it like it is a live environment, that those firearms, which we use green gas, which is, there's no ammo, uh, but it simulates with a recoil. And we use Glock 45s or G45s in our simulator because it has a full handle. Even though it has a smaller slide, it has a full handle, so it's, it's better for people with smaller hands as well as larger hands. So that's why we use that in our simulator. Uh, now, in the sim den, you're free to bring your own firearm. We usually have red lasers that will go in different types of firearms so that we can kind of test your trigger pull, test how you're pulling the target, oscillating the end, all those type of things to get you familiar with your firearm. But remember, you do not bring any ammo 
to our sessions. So again, it's got to be no ammo, leave it at home, don't bring it. That will be different if you're going to a range where you need to take your ammo with you. Not when you come to us, if you're having to be in Northern Texas and you want a session with me, and you do not want to bring any ammo. You can bring your gun, but no ammo. As far as the simulator goes, we have you covered with that, uh, and you're gonna have a really good time in our simulator, okay? It's a 120 inch screen, uh, really interactive simulation. You get to choose shoot or no shoot environments. We'll do some drills, some uh, transitioning drills, some neat stuff that's going to help you develop a sight picture, going to help you develop that front sight, keeping it on the target, all those good things that are going to make you more proficient with your firearm. All right. Okay, let's get into some lessons here. All right, what's the objective today? Uh, well, we're going to identify the different components of a pistol cartridge. We're going to explain the firing sequence of that cartridge, how it works with the primer and how it functions with the gunpowder and the projectile. We're going to kind of get into all that. There's different types. There's, uh, there's center fire. There's rim fire. We're going to talk about those. Uh, we're going to explain how to properly identify and store your ammunition. Okay, Not only looking at your firearm to see what's printed on the barrel or on the side of your slide, but also how to look at the actual cartridge uh, and also how to look at the box that your ammo comes in as well. That's important. Uh, and then state the major types of cartridge malfunctions and how to react to them. Okay, so this is something that you will practice uh, on the range. Now, we also do this in the simulation, but we use it with dummy rounds. The rounds have no gunpowder in them. They're total dummy rounds. And we kind of show you how you would handle those, like a misfire and things like that. So don't worry. We cover all that, but there's absolutely no live rounds on our training facility, okay? Uh, what else are we going to cover? Um, we're going to talk about explain the fundamentals of pistol shooting. And again, we're going to demonstrate that in the sim den, uh, how to do that so that by the time you get that muscle memory, you understand the key fundamentals. Now you're ready to take that newfound knowledge to a live range. So we're really preparing you for the live range. Now, when it comes to dry fire, I'm going to do that 10 to 1. I'm going to dry fire more than I am to live fire. Uh, because again, the cost of rounds, the convenience, uh, and of course I have a simulator, so it makes it easy for me. We can actually help you get a simulator too. If you get bitten by that bug and you really want to have one, we can help you get involved in that and even get you a discount in that. All right, so let's look at the cartridge. So here's the cartridge. You have the case. This is the projectile we call the bullet. Okay. You have the powder in here is the charge and you have a primer that goes in the end, right? Now, when the firing pin strikes this primer, it's gonna send the spark down into, ignite this gunpowder. It's gonna create an enormous amount of pressure on this metal casing that pushes on the side of your chamber, and that's what's gonna push that projectile down the barrel. You got these lands and grooves that's gonna slowly turn that projectile as it leaves the end of the barrel or the muzzle. Now, let's look at the cartridge, start at the back. Okay. All right. So you have different types. These are called rim fire, means that the primer component is contained in the inside of the rim of the case head. This is very typical for things like 22s, right? Small little 22s that are solid across the tire back. Then those will typically be rim fire, right? So the striker will actually strike, the hammer will strike the pin, and it will actually pinch the actual rim. That will cause an ignition of the actual gunpowder, and that's where that starts. Now, here we have what's called a center fire cartridge. The primer is located in the end, okay? And when the strike pin strikes it, it sends it into the chamber here, which ignites the gunpowder. Now, the priming compound is contained in a metal cup, this little cup here, okay, called a primer, in the center of the case head. So it's in the center of the back of the actual bullet. Now let's talk about it in sequence here. So as you can see here, here's a cutaway view. So if you kind of bring you up to speed, what we've got here. So here's the shell, okay, of the, of the, of the uh, cartridge. This is the bullet. This is the gunpowder. Here's the primer. So your firing pin comes in or your hammer comes down on your firing pin and it hits the primer. The primer, the cartridge is loaded in the chamber and the breech is closed, okay? So let me demonstrate that for you here. So here, 
you've got a magazine, and again, it's empty. You put your round in here, it comes up, and when you activate this, it loads that cartridge in the actual chamber, okay? Once it's in the chamber, this is the breech, okay? Now, this breech is closed. This gun is in the firing pin, in this case, there's a striker on this Glock style. It is ready to go, right? Now, I pull this trigger, the striker is going to hit the firing pin, and that's gonna cause a reaction. Now, when the trigger is pulled, causing the firing pin to hit the cartridge, primer, or cartridge rim, depending on the type you have, okay? In this case, this is a rim fire center cartridge, right here, and it hits it. First thing's gonna happen is it's gonna strike it. Next, as you see here, the primer explodes with a hot spark that ignites the powder that's in the casing. Now, as that powder starts to burn up and that pressure expands, the powder burns and creates a very high pressure uh, gas that begins to push the bullet down the bore. Increasing pressure in the chamber also causes the case to expand outward tightly against the chamber walls, preventing the gases from leaking out the rear and allowing all that pressure to push the projectile out the front, down the grooves and the lands, out of the end of your firearm. Now, it continues that combustion of the powder, accelerates the bullet through those bores, uh, down those lands and those grooves, until it leaves the muzzle. The hot the high velocity gas exit the muzzle, makes a loud bang, okay? Sends off a, 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 a real bright, uh, you know, fire comes out the end uh, when it hits the surrounding atmosphere. So that's how you get that bang pressure out the end of your muzzle, okay? And then of course the projectile heads down to wherever you're aiming the target. Now, one of the things that are very important, and I tell people all the time, for example, this is a Glock 43, this is a nine millimeter. It is actually printed on it with a nine times 19, which is a designation for the nine millimeter. Now your case might have nine millimeter on it. It also might have nine millimeter Luger on it. It might have nine times 19 millimeter. That's what this has. All of those are variations of nine millimeter. So you might hear it called a nine millimeter Luger. It might be just nine millimeter, or it might even be just a nine that, uh, times 19. Those are all nine, um, nine millimeter cartridges. Um, but the cartridge designation is either marked on the pistol, it's gonna be stamped on the head of the cartridge as well, and printed on the box. So right here, you see this is a 45, and it says 45 auto right on the actual barrel, barrel itself. And again, here is stamped on the head of the cartridge case right here. See, it says 45 auto. These will also say 9mm, or it could say 9 times 19 mm or it could say 9mm Luger if it's a 9mm. Could be a 40 cal, say 40 cal on it. Okay, be very aware of what you're shooting. And then, of course, the boxes of the ammo that you buy, be very aware also what is on the box so that it matches your firearm. If you ever have a question about any of this, make sure that you ask the person at the counter that you're buying your ammo from. Okay, they're going to know that's why they work there. They're going to make sure you get the right ammo for the firearm. Now, sometimes, depending on what you have, you could get some that at the end of the case on the back. Now, of course, this is a good picture of the primer right here. Um, you could get it, say, plus P or it might say plus P plus. What do those designations mean? Now, camp, example, this is a 45 automatic, my 1911 Remington Enhanced. I sometimes get ammo that is plus P, and that means that it has a higher level of pressure than you would with a standard round. And why? Because it has different ballistic performance characteristics, okay? Whether I'm shooting certain distances, or I'm trying to get a certain velocity, or what it is, depending on the condition that I'm going for, then these have a much higher pressure than your standard rounds, okay? Uh, so typically you wouldn't need something like a plus P or plus P plus, for your normal everyday carry, or normal defense, you just use your standard rounds. But just again, make sure also that your firearm can actually handle high pressure rounds. So that's important to do the research to determine whether or not, even though this is a 45 cal, you need to make sure that your firearm can handle plus 45 or, plus, uh, or a plus P or a plus P plus. You need to make sure, okay? Anytime you're gonna use something with higher than normal uh, pressures, levels in that actual firearm.
or in that actual cartridge. All right, now let's talk a little bit about storing your ammunition. Okay, ammunition should be stored in a cool, dry place, indoors, in your safe, things like that. Cool, dry place. Always keep the ammunition in the original factory box or carton. So whether you have an ammo carrier or not, make sure you put everything into the box. And let me go on and make sure I fix this a little bit because again, I'm not seeing everything here. So we want to make sure that I get you everything that we need to in the picture. So bear with me here and I'm going to crop this in. Bear with me. Uh, let's see here. I got to make sure I get it all on the screen, folks. So bear with me. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so store the ammo in a location where children and under other unauthorized persons can access it. We do not want people getting to your ammo. Um, you know what? You might have your gun stored in a safe place, locked away if you have unauthorized people around that are not supposed to get to it. But if they get the ammo, you, they could have a friend who's not as diligent as you are. And your child may bring them the ammo. And then the other child may say, hey, I know where there's a gun. And they may get it. Okay, very popular, like nine millimeters. Again, the ammo could be used, obviously, in other guns, and we don't want that, and we don't want to find out that the ammo came from your house. So, again, keep it away from people that, that are not authorized to have access to it. Keep it locked away in your gun safe, but definitely do not store it where people can get to it. Okay? Now, do not expose ammunition to water, solvents, petroleum products, or other materials that can cause cartridge deterioration and malfunction. Okay? Again, keep your ammo away safe in your gun safe, in a metal storage uh, gun shelf, whatever, keep it away from moisture, solvents, petroleum products, and all that kind of stuff. Keep it safe. Now, wipe fingerprints off of cartridges to avoid corrosion due to salty residuals. Okay, if you're handling your firearms and you're handling ammo and you're storing it and you're touching your ammo, maybe you're loading your own, make sure you wipe them down when you store it because sitting there for a long period of times, the salts and residues and things in your hand can deteriorate your, your, uh, your shell and it could weaken its integrity. And we just don't want that to take place. So again, keep your ammo clean, keep it in the original box, keep it in a dry, safe place, okay? Store it in a cool, dry place. Okay. Keep it out of reach of children or other people that, that are not authorized to get to it. Okay. And just respect your ammo. Again, you want it to be reliable. All right. Now let's talk about some of the cartridge malfunctions that you might run into. So you might come into a misfire uh, where you pull the trigger and nothing happens. Or you might run into a hang fire where it actually comes out in the actual round, the cartridge gets jammed in the gun. And you might even come up with what's called a squib load where it sounds like it goes off, but the bullet only goes up very slightly into the actual barrel and it's locked into the barrel. Very careful in dealing with each one of these, okay? Um, so we can replicate examples of this, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through what happens in case you run into each one of these conditions. All right, a misfire. What is a misfire? Okay, so a misfire is the failure of a cartridge to ignite when the primer or the case rim, depending on what you're dealing with, is struck by the firing pin. So basically it fires it, you know you pulled the trigger. Okay, so I'm here and I'm downrange, and again, safe area downrange, and this gun again, I just keep reiterating, it is empty, because again, we have the internet police. Uh, this gun is empty, okay? So we're doing it for demonstration purposes only, okay? So this gun pointed safely downrange, again, in our last lesson, again, understanding your trigger finger is up on the frame, not in the trigger guard and not in on the trigger, up here on the frame. Okay, I'm in, pointing safely down, you're in a range and you pull it and there's a misfire. You pull the trigger and nothing happens, okay? It may be that your firing pin is worn out, it may be that it's a a, a bad primer uh, or something's going on with the cartridge. Now, there's important things you have to do. So I'm on range and we practice this in the sim den as well. We do simulated misfires, okay? So what do you do? Well, you keep it here and the causes could be a defective cartridge or again, you could have a damaged firing pin or a striker, okay? So 
Again, could be any of those reasons. What do you do? Okay, if I'm at the range, I keep it pointed down range. I wait 30 full seconds before I check anything because it could be a delay. And you don't want to open this action and start looking in and all of a sudden that misfire, but then it's maybe a delay and it goes off. So keep it, wait 30 seconds, keep it pointed down range. Don't immediately start foraging and looking into it. Wait at least 30 seconds. Then safely open the action, okay? which hopefully will eject the round out and examine around the hole and see if there's anything going on, okay? Safely examine it, but do not open this up in exposing the breach for at least 30 seconds and keep it pointed in a safe direction downrange before you do any examination, okay? Very important when you have a misfire. And again, that's if you pull the trigger and you know the firing pin or the striker hit the actual cartridge, but nothing happened. It could be a defective cartridge, bad primer, could got moisture in your cartridge. Again, you didn't follow storage practices, um, or it could be, again, a defective pistol, right? Now, what is a hang fire? Okay, slightly different here. So a hang fire is a perceptible, uh, which is a perceivable delay, or I just says, what is this? perceptible delay in the ignition of the cartridge after the primer or case room has been struck by the firing pin. This delay may last several seconds. Okay, so a hang fire. So I'm on the range, I'm here, and I pull my trigger and it doesn't do anything. There's a delay. Well, it could be a couple seconds before it goes off, okay? So you're not sure what's going on. You're focused on the target, You've acquired the target, you pull the trigger, and there's this hang fire. Now, when a cartridge falls, a fails to fire immediately, it will not be known if the problem is a misfire or maybe even a hang fire, because they both act very similar. Because a hang fire condition can cause the pistol to fire after a certain level of delay. Okay, so the pistol should be kept where? Just like it was with the misfire. It needs to be pointed down in a safe direction. You need to wait. You need to allow at least 30 seconds before any action or any removing or trying to remove a cartridge. Wait and give it time because it could simply be a delay, okay? Safety first. Now, there's also things that we go over uh, in training, like how to, 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 to uh, clear things like a stove pipe, where it's an expand round, doesn't totally eject, but it gets kind of caught in the action. And we have some training that we go over that. We replicate that with dummy rounds. Again, no live rounds on our, uh, our sim range. So again, we show you how to do that so that on the range, if it happens, you know how to clear all that safely, okay? But again, treat a misfire and a hang fire very much the same way. Keep it pointed down range and give it time. Okay? It could simply be just a delay, okay? Now, squib fire. Now, squib fire just might have some bad gunpowder. It might have got some moisture in it, a bad primer, but you end up pulling the trigger and it goes off. Maybe the, maybe the bullet that you bought, the cartridge, maybe they didn't fill it properly. Maybe it didn't have enough gunpowder in it. Maybe it's just one of those that got through and it still was there. Now, maybe it has very little powder in it. And anyway, all it does is move the projectile a little bit up the actual barrel. And it's kind of stuck in the barrel. That is called a squib load, okay? Now, what are the signs of a squib load? It doesn't sound like it's normal report, okay? You get a reduced muzzle flash, and again, you have a reduced recoil. It just feels sluggish, okay? Okay, if it feels that way, then you probably have what's called a squib load, okay? Now, one thing about a squib load is, again, if you heard anything, I recommend you still give it 30 seconds, keep it safely downrange, then, Make sure you open it, you clear, you check and make sure. Now at that point, hopefully, and I always, I'll be honest with you, I always do this. I carry a little flashlight with me, one of the small ones, because what I do is I'll stick it in the end and I'm looking safely inside the breech and I'm looking to see if I can see my flashlight. Okay, if that squib load is in there, you will not see that light the same as it when it's out there. So try it with nothing in there and then try it within there, you can tell. Okay, and then at that point, once you've removed the casing and everything's out, then you can proceed to 
remove that squib load. Um, I recommend, for example, breaking your gun down, getting familiar with how to do that. In this case, if this right here were to have a squib load, remember it's safe direction, pull the trigger. In this case, pull it back, pull it forward. I can pull this apart. I can pull this barrel out. And when I pull this barrel out, then I can check it safely and try to remove that squib load if that's what took place, okay? So keep that in mind. It's important that you follow those basic fundamentals and principles, okay? All right. All right, so now we're putting our gun back in a safe condition. And remember, again, again, I'll show you how to break this down. Once you break this down, pull it apart, okay? And make sure you have everything. I will show you this because I have shown other people before. This would be pulling out the barrel if it's a squib load and looking down the barrel. It's safe once it's out, okay? Um, and seeing what you've got going on. So it's much easier to do it that way. Now putting this one back together, get familiar with it. This is your recoil spring. I put this recoil spring in. We put it back in the firearm, okay? Uh, again, and we're going to load it. Now be careful when you're putting your firearm back together because many of them have different elements or different components that if you don't put it together properly, when you're putting together, you can damage stuff, okay? So we wanna make sure that you know what you're doing and that's why you wanna practice with your firearm. You wanna practice breaking it down, cleaning it, getting familiar with how this one works, okay? This is a Glock 43, I love it. It's so easy to break down and clean uh, and those type of things. Okay, so that's how it's what you would have with the squib load. Again, always remember the rules. Keep your gun pointed in a safe direction downrange. Keep your finger off that trigger until you're ready to acquire the target and shoot, and keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. Okay, those are basic fundamentals. Now again, in home defense or concealed carry, you're always ready to use it. So you will have it loaded at that point, and that is where good safe principles come in, making sure you understand finger control, keeping it out of the trigger guard, keeping it on the frame, practicing pulling it from the draw. And again, sometimes you can't do that at a range. They don't like that. But you can do it in our send-in and you can do it in a dry fire environment. Just make sure all your ammo is out of the room. Make sure you've cleared all of the ammo from your gun and it's a safe condition. And then practice. You can even get things like lasers to practice and stuff like that that will really help you. In fact, we have access to all that where you can get a discount. You can get 5% off laser simulators, red dot, uh, red lasers, all those type of things, some active reactive targets. We have all of that available. Just reach out to us. We'll help you and get you a discount. No reason you should pay full price for any of that stuff. Okay. All right. So one of the things that we're going to do on a range is we're going to teach you how to determine which is your dominant eye. Now, I happen to know that my dominant eye is my left eye. Okay, and how do I determine that? Well, one of the ways to do this is make a diamond with your hand, and I'll show you from the side as I make a diamond and I'm looking into it and center it on a target, okay? And then when I do that, put it in the center and keep whatever the target is that's in the center of your triangle, close the left eye and look in the center and then close the right eye. If the object is not in the center, then the one that puts it in the center is your dominant eye, okay? Another way to do this is use your thumb. So put your thumb on a target with both eyes open and you'll see your thumb will come but kind of get translucent looking. And you're focused on whatever the thing is in the distance that you're focusing on. Focus on it with both eyes and you're looking through the thumb to whatever the target is and it'll get, your thumb will get kind of translucent. Now, keeping your thumb on that target that you're aiming at, close the left eye, and close the right eye. If I close the left eye and my thumb moves off the target, but I close the right eye and the thumb stays on the target, that is your dominant eye. And so when you bring your firearm up, you always wanna bring your firearm up to your dominant eye, okay? Now with training, you know that you're keeping both eyes open and it just becomes a focus on the front sight and then everything in the distance will get blurry, but you still can pick up the target and it's just something that we will practice at the sim den and you should also practice on the range. But you need to determine your dominant eye and I am more than certain that your NRA instructor will teach you how to determine that, okay? So again, once you determine that, we next are gonna say, okay, 
What is a position in the platform for which all the shooting fundamentals are executed? A position should be what is comfortable, balanced, relaxed, and properly aligned with the target. So I don't want to be at an angle. I don't want to be leaning back on the heels. I don't want to look too far that I feel uncomfortable. I want a nice bend in the knees. I want to be able to extend outward. Example, outward. And I want to make sure that I feel comfortable in my position. So we call this the ready position. You're on the balls of your feet, not too forward, not on the heels. You're actively ready. So think of it as this way. If you were trying to be active and ready to be able to go left or right, that's an active position. But you want to also be relaxed and comfortable, but you need to stay balanced. So in the simulator, what I do is I tell people to get into a position and we push them, we move them. We want them to be able to feel like they're well balanced to hold their position. That is a proper shooting position. Okay. Now, if you're using a bench to shoot, uh, it's proper that we set the bench at the proper height. We have a proper wrist uh, bench rest, wrist uh, rest as well. Could be a sandbag or something else, uh, a little uh, pillow type of thing. Uh, if you're going to be shooting from a bench, um, you want to make sure that your head is erect, your arms are extended out in front of you, your body is upright but you're not actually touching the bench like you see in this picture. You're not actually touching it. Uh, and you wanna keep your back straight, okay? So we'll go over this type of stuff in the sim den. Uh, but most of the training we do is from an upright position because my training is more focused on in-home defense and how to properly use a firearm in movement, uh, especially if you're gonna be going to take a concealed handgun permit licensing or something like that. That's basically, but we will cover sitting on a bench just like this. Now this is a proper two-handed grip. You notice how he's very erect, but he is kind of a little bit on the balls of his feet. Gun is two-handed grip, a Sosceles shooting position, means they're straight out, they're basically forming a triangle between your arms, straight out in front of him. Now he's actually using a revolver, like this again, safe, there's nothing in this revolver, and he's holding it out in front of him, out here. Okay, so this triangle of the arms creates a triangle from the handgun back to the shoulder, across the sternum, over to the other shoulder, and then back down to the actual um, pistol itself. Okay, so this is what we call a, a Sosceles shooting position. Now, when it comes to the hand right here, now let's say we'll do a right-handed gun. So you see I'm going to be showing it just like it's in this picture. Your non-shooting hand, okay, safely puts the pistol in the shooting hand. So this is the non-shooting hand, and it's going to be putting it into the pistol hand, making sure you're underneath the, the beaver tail so you don't get bit by any slide action here and it cuts into you. Again, they can show you how to seat this in there in our sim den. We show you all of this. So this is just an overview. It should not take the place of working with an actual instructor who can actually put your hand in these environments. Okay, this is a non-shooting hand, We're bringing our shooting hand over to it, get seated underneath the beaver tail, okay? And the non-shooting hand safely puts the pistol in the shooting hand in the V, okay? The V of your shooting hand, right here, okay? And your forefinger on the shooting is placed up high, okay? So we've got here, and kind of showing you this way, the thumb is up high, and then the forefinger will come in here, and it will rest on the front, and you can see my front finger is here on the slide. This is that safety position with that finger. So, again, looking at the picture, is the non-shooting hand will put the pistol into the shooting hand V between the thumb and the forefinger, okay, right here, Puts it in there for shooting hand and place it high on the pistol's back strap. Again, bring it up in here high just under the beaver tail. If you have a beaver tail, be very aware of this slide action and what it can do if you're dealing with a semi-automatic. Again, your finger, trigger finger, is going to rest along the frame. Not going to go to the trim guard, not going to go inside the, the uh, trigger guard, uh, just on the trigger guard, not inside on the trigger. Okay, keeping it here. Okay. Again, the non-shooting hand safely puts the pistol into that V, as we just did. Next, the pistol is gripped with the base of the thumb here, 
base of the thumb and the three lower fingers. These three down here. This is gonna grab the actual grip, okay? Now grip pressure is straight onto the rear. The trigger finger is along the frame, okay? So again, your non-shooting hand brings it to the V between your thumb and your, and your pointer finger, okay, or your forefinger. Seat it in there, seat it up under the beaver tail, being very aware of the slide, gripping it with your three fingers onto the, the actual uh, grip and your thumb applying pressure at the back of the thumb against the firearm right here at the base of the firearm. And you're gonna lay your forefinger along the frame, not on the trigger guard and not in it, on the frame, okay? So we have firm grip as we can present the firearm, okay? Now, when you do that, you're gonna take the left hand, which is a non-shooting hand, and bring it to support the shooting hand. So what this is gonna look like is here. Once this is done, you bring it back here, wrap it over the three fingers, and run that thumb underneath parallel with your other thumb, keeping it away from the slide action, okay? So they sit on top of each other, both pointing where? Pointing down range, okay? And bring the support hand into the shooting hand and wrap the support hand fingers around the shooting hand fingers. Again, wrap in, this is the supporting hand, wrap it around the fingers and keeping that thumb underneath your other thumb parallel with the barrel. Okay, now what are you gonna do? You're gonna bring the heel of the supporting hand firmly against the heel of the shooting hand. So you, again, bringing them together. So again, these fingers wrap around it, okay, wrap around it. This thumb goes underneath this thumb. They're both pointing down. And then you bring both the heels of your hands together to sandwich the grip, okay? And this is a firm grip, don't worry. We teach all this class in the SimDem so that you can actually see it and put it into practice. But that is the procedures, Ken. Free hand, bring it to your shooting hand. Plot pressure with the base of the thumb. Wrap the three fingers around the grip. Bring your forefinger or the trigger finger up here and put it on the frame. Bring the non-shooting hand, bring it back. Bring these three forefingers over top of your grip fingers. Put the thumb in parallel and just under your other thumb, okay, from the shooting hand. And then bring the heels of your hands together, forming this solid base to be able to aim this firearm, okay? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so that is how you would do that. Don't worry, in our sim den, we go over all of that in a safe environment. And if you have a local NRA instructor, they will go over all that for you. Now, now there's a what's called a thumb position. It's the two-handed grip, okay? And so what this is, for example, this right here is the revolver. And as you can see here, you take the non-shooting hand and it lies atop the shooting hand's thumb. So here is my shooting hand, okay? And I've got my thumb right here, as you can see, wrapped around firearm. And again, I remind you, there is no ammo, okay? No ammo here, all right? So my thumb comes down, presses against my lower three fingers, and then this hand goes over my fingers and this thumb covers this thumb. Okay, so the non-shooting hand wraps around my fingers and the thumb covers this thumb. This is called the what? This is called the two-handed grip, okay? All right, so that's what we've got there. And the two-handed grip for this one, for a semi-automatic, the same thing. The non-shooting hand thumb is under the shooting thumb, and I showed you this a minute ago. So the two hand grip here, they kind of run underneath and lay on top of each other. Obviously your non-shooting hands, one that's not with the gun, goes wraps around the fingers that are grabbing the grip, and the thumb that's going parallel from your, that's supporting it from your shooting hand, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna bring in the thumb and lay it directly underneath it, and that's gonna add additional support uh, to the firing, okay? Now think about shooting. So this is stressful for many people, right? You got a firearm, a handgun in your hand, aiming, and one of the most important aspects of the fundamentals of shooting is breath control. 
breathing, not trying to hold it, okay? And, and, and basically trying to hold your breath. You need to understand how to breathe, okay? And you have to understand something we call hold control right before you press the trigger. We have to understand trigger control, and then we have to remember there's a certain thing called follow through. Now, I teach in a sim den how to pull, keep it close, and then drive it towards the target, okay? And there's a process of aiming along that way. There's a process of breath control, when to hold your breath right before you press the trigger and you squeeze it, okay? So trigger control is important. And again, the follow through. These five fundamentals should be performed with every shot. And that's the beautiful thing about a simulator because you get to focus on each one of these things and, and put a lot of uh, simulations downrange rather than wasting ammo at a range. Now, once you get proficient with this in dry firing in a simulator, then obviously you can take this out to the range. So let's talk about aiming a little bit. So aiming is the process of achieving the proper relationship between the target, that front sight, and that rear sight. Because this is what we talk about sight picture. So. The firearm has to aim properly. Doesn't matter what you do, if you're not aiming at the target properly, you're not gonna hit the target, okay? So we need to learn to aim properly, okay? So aiming consists of two components, okay? Sight alignment and what we call sight picture. Now, sight alignment means it's the sight alignment refers to the proper relationship of the pistol's front and rear sight. So here you see a depiction. So this little triangle here and this little triangle, this depicts the sides of the groove that's in the back of your firearm. Now again, this is safe. There's a safe that way and safe this way. So I'm going to safely show you the back here. So you can see, now I have uh, glow dots on mine, but you can see that there is the actual uh, sight and you want to, to align that front sight even and in the middle equally on each sides of that little U-shaped cutout in your back sight, okay? This happens to be open sights. Mine happen to be fiber optic, fiber optic and true glows so that I can see them in the dark, okay? So here you see proper sight alignment. So there's exact same distance on each side. So this little square right here, this actually represents down here at the front sight is what that replicates. So when you're, Getting that sight alignment, you want that to all be even and you want that, that actual front sight to be perfectly even to each side right in the middle, just like this. So this is perfect sight alignment, same amount on each side, okay? This represents the back of the sight. This little square is looking through that little opening and sees the front of the sight and you're trying to line them all up, okay? Now, once you get used to that, now you have to develop something which is called a sight picture. And a sight picture is the proper sight picture is obtained when the aligned sights are put into their proper relationship with a target, okay? So let's look at here. So here we've got the, the little orange dot that's on the front sight, and you see that it's right in the middle of the rear sights. So it's getting proper sight alignment. And now where you're painting this picture, so right here, it's called a six o'clock hole. So right now we have it at 12, three, six, and nine. Right now that dot is right there. Everything's lined up at six o'clock on this target, okay? And this one be considered, this sight picture right here is called a center hole. You notice that it is lined up directly onto the center. Okay, so that is what you're looking down your firearm and you not only, once you get good sight alignment with the front sight, with your rear sights, now you're going to align them with the proper sight picture onto the target. These are things that we demonstrate uh, in the, um, the sim den. Uh, and it's harder to do this at the range because you got to keep bringing the ammo back and forth. We can actually do this in a simulator and actually show you with high level of accuracy where your round is going and whether or not you're pulling it or you're having proper sight alignment or you're too low to the left. And uh, we start out with the red, uh, the red laser to kind of give you a basic understanding. And then we tradition to what's called an infrared, means you won't see it until you pull the trigger. And that lets us know whether or not with our recoil, Again, we use simulated green gas training pistols that gives you recoil. 
Now we can see whether or not you're pulling or not, or whether it's too much trigger pull, or whether or not you're getting good sight picture, uh, or your lineman is starting out right or wrong, and if you're not doing a proper sight picture, all of those things we can determine. But you need to practice these things because it's important because that is what's going to determine where that round goes. All right, now let's look at what happens when we have uh, improper or errors in our sight alignment and our sight picture. Okay, so check this one out. All right, so everything's going off to the left. Well, at this point, I don't even see my front sight. So I see barely a piece over here. So you'll notice that here the sight alignment is more critical than the sight picture. I must put this front sight on the target. I must to be able to see, to be able to hit what I'm aiming at, I got to put this front sight on the target. So that's why you hear us always say things like front sight, front sight, front sight. Focus on getting that front sight on the target and then bring your alignment up at then. So I want to make sure that I, at my dominance eye, that I can see that front sight between the uprights of my rear sight. And then I'm going to do a sight picture and make sure that when I put it on the target, that I align the front sight with my back sights and I put it on the target. Here, they might be at the same level, but that front sight is nowhere to be seen. So the sight alignment is much more critical than the sight picture, okay? So in this case right here, I don't even see the front sight, so my rounds are going off to the left. Same here, now notice here that you can't really see it, but if my front sight is too far to the left, then my rounds are gonna aim to the left, okay? If my front sight is a little off to the right, it's not in my alignment properly, then it doesn't matter whether the sight picture is even or I'm aiming it in the proper location on the target. If that front sight is not developing that, that perfect layout where it's right in the middle of my back rear sight, then I'm going to be pushing those rounds off to the right. So we can tell what you're doing by where it shows your rounds are at. All right, there you go. So sight alignment, again, here's another example where everything is sitting here, but you'll notice how it's a little higher. And you'll notice that the sight picture has us aiming to the left of center mass here. So you wonder why these are a little high? It's because the front sight is up a little high, okay? And here is another again, you'll notice here, where is my front sight, everything looks like a good sight picture, but everything's going a little high, okay? So I might have to drop down to the six hold, and that would put me at center. You'll get used to your firearm, you'll get used to moving it around, but again, sight alignment is so much more critical than sight picture, and that reminds me to go back over this again. This is your sight alignment, and this is your sight picture, okay? This is a six o'clock hole, this is a center hole, okay? All right, so there you go. Now. Let's talk about front sight focus. Um, when I am focusing on that front sight, means I take this front sight and I put it on my target, bringing it to my dominant eye, and I'm doing a good sight picture. I've got the sight alignment, everything's good. I'm placing it on the target. When I focus on that front sight, once I acquire the target and put that front sight on it, by focusing on that front sight, the actual target will get blurry. But don't worry. As long as you're lining it up, it's okay for it to get blurry because I want you to focus on that front sight. Now, when you get into more things like uh, transitional targets, you're gonna find that it's so much more important to focus on the target, but you gotta remember to put that sight on it uh, or that front sight on it. But again, when you're shooting for qualification or ranging uh, three yards, five yards, seven yards, again, once you acquire the target, get your sight alignment, get your sight picture, put it onto the target. Once you know you're onto the target, then you're focusing on that front sight, the actual target will get blurry, and that is perfectly normal, okay? Now, once you've gotten used to that, and again, we cover that in the range, uh, and a good NRA, instru NRA instructor will cover all of those so you feel comfortable with it. Uh, next, you move on to breathing control. Now, breathing control minimizes the body movement produced, produced by breathing, which can impair good judgment. Uh, it can also cause your shots to move around or oscillate. So you want to have good breathing control. 
So take a breath before each shot. Let out enough air to feel comfortable, not passing out. Let out enough air to be comfortable. Then simply stop breathing for a second while firing the shot. So when I've done all that I need to do and I'm going to acquire the target and I'm focusing on that front sight and then whatever the target is will come blurry because I'm focusing on that front sight. I'm getting a good sight alignment, so good sight picture. Everything's done. I take a breath and exhale. And then right before I pause and pull the trigger, okay? And again, you're squeezing it. You're not jerking it. And we can go over that in the sim den. It'll become very obvious. But also a good NRA instructor will talk about that breath control. Now, avoid holding your breath too long. This can cause tremors or because you're nervous, if you're nervous around firearms, then you end up could end up having some movement and it could cause your firearm to oscillate. And again, that can move your shot off your intended target. So practice your breathing. So again, deep breath. Once you get to that point where you feel comfortable, hold your breath for one second, squeeze it off, and then continue breathing. Okay? Do not hold the breath too long because doing that or not getting used to this breathing control can cause you to get the tremors and it can affect the outcome. So we don't want to do that. So we'll go through some proper breathing drills and things like that. All right, hold control. This allows a shooter to maintain proper sight alignment and sight picture while firing the shot. Okay, a proper grip is critical for hold control, making sure we go over it and that you do all those things that we talked about in order to make sure the gun is seated well in your hand. So you have a firm grip. Now, if you have a firm control of the firearm with even pressure from both hands onto this firearm and really pushing it, pushing it towards the target, then you'll have what's called a hold control. Uh, one goal of, of hold control is to minimize the arc of movement in the front of your firearm. Okay, minimize that movement so that you get used to it. Pressing it out, equal pressure, you can get to where, and we show you this by using the red laser. You can see the movement oscillating. So we work on hold control, but you want to get used to pressing this out and being able to basically keep it still. And it comes from even pressure on the hands, properly gripping the firearm and moving it towards your target and really focusing on it. It's going to keep it from oscillating. And that is called hold control. And that's going to have keep you from having what's called arc of movement in the in the firearm, which can affect the trajectory or the intended location of your shot. OK. So what is arc of movement? Arc of movement refers to the unavoidable motion of a pistol held in a shooter's position. Uh, practical decreases the arc of a uh, practice. More and more you practice, the more you get familiar with how to hold your firearm, equal pressure, pushing it towards the target, and really focusing on keeping it still as possible. And you can practice this again with a laser cartridge insert on a target to really Focus on those drills. Remember, you don't always have to shoot live to get better. You can go and get used to it. And this is why simulation is so good. It's basically you can see this movement and it allows you to practice your breathing, allows you to be able to focus on the target. It allows you to hold your position, hold control, all those things, your breathing, uh, and it'll make you better. And the less movement you get, and it also gets you aware of things, conditions that you might have by Maybe you're anticipating the recoil makes you nervous. Again, when you press it out, you'll be able to identify those things and the movement will be very evident. And we can work on that. Okay, here you go. See this? This is an example. Watch the gun right here. Okay, you're holding it and what happens is it moves on you. This can affect the outcome. You need to practice getting it and holding it steady. Now we again do this drill with the laser. There you go, look at it moving around. That is arc of movement. That is what you're trying to reduce. And it takes practice. The more you practice, maybe you're not familiar with the weight. Uh, maybe you're a female using a firearm and it's heavy. 
practice, 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 you will get it to where you can hold that dot right in the center of the target and it just will not move. And you can practice your breathing, practice everything there, uh, and you'll get better. And we go over this in the sim den. All right. Next, trigger control. How much finger to have on it, again, is affected. You don't want to wrap your finger around it. You don't want to be like this. You see this in the movies where they got their finger all the way around like that. Okay, no. Very important to have that trigger control, the fingertip, or up to the first joint. Okay, be sure that you go over this and you practice this. And the NRA instructor will do that with you. We obviously do that in the, the sim den. And it's a safe environment for everybody to learn proper trigger control. So trigger control is the proper method of activating the trigger to minimize movement that can misalign the sight. So if you have too much finger in there and you pull the trigger, you can literally pull the front of the gun off of your sight. If you have too little or too much, not enough on it, you could slip off of it. You could pull it off sight. So again, learning how to do this. And you want to squeeze the trigger, not yank it. Squeeze the trigger. Now, let's look at this here. Trigger is between the fingertip and the first joint of the index finger. Okay? So between the fingertip and the first joint, you want to have it right there. Okay? Okay, not too much in it, not too little, especially with a Glock, because you have that safety in the middle. So you want to actually put that right in the center from the tip to the first joint, okay? Now, a trigger is squeezed straight rearward in a smooth, continuous movement, okay? Not jerky, okay? Not to the side. You want to practice pulling straight back. So I have students that'll do this, and they visualize it, and they pull straight back and get familiar with that. It's a squeeze, okay? A, the other thing to remember is that as you squeeze it, you actually should be surprised by the break in the trigger, okay? Not jerky, herky-jerky. And we go over this, and you can actually hear it. Now, the interesting thing about these type of firearms is that when you shoot it, okay, and you hear it break, I will bring it here, Okay, now watch this here. You've got it here. Now watch when it comes out. Hear that? It's ready to go. You don't have to come all the way out and it's ready to go again, watch. Okay, so you will get used to that and you'll get control of your trigger and it's gonna make you a much better shooter. You don't have so much of range of motion and you'll learn that every firearm is different. Uh, but again, trigger control is extremely important because it keeps the muzzle from moving, uh, keeps that sight on target, and you have total control of your trigger finger, okay? Now, trigger squeeze and sight alignment are done while maintaining a minimum arc of motion. We want to not have this muzzle oscillating. All has to do with your hold control, all with the proper trigger control, putting your finger on it properly. Practice, practice, practice. And a red laser makes this brilliant, okay, to be able to see how that works. Now, in our guns that have the recoil, it's also beautiful because, again, we can actually see where the shots are. And when we do a replay, we can see how close they are in a grouping to see if there's any movement of your muzzle. If you have a red laser, you can see that as well and maintain the red laser, okay? Now, as you become a better shooter, you're going to want to move away from a red laser. You're going to go infrared uh, and then let the reporting software like our simulator show you where your shots are. Uh, because, again, you don't want to get so focused on the red laser. Uh, and that's a downside to red dots lasers is you start to focus on the laser and less the fundamentals of the front sight and creating that picture and all that kind of stuff. And you too much rely on the laser. OK, but anyway, um, just be familiar with all those type of things. Now you see the picture here, you can see it moving right here. See how that's pulled, it's straight back. Straight back, not to the side, not at an angle, straight back, okay? Just like it shows here, all right? Now, let's talk about follow through. To me, this is one of the most important fundamentals of shooting, is the follow through. This is the continuation of the application of the fundamentals of shooting through the immediately after the gun is fired. 
So if I'm here and I fire, I am immediately following through with it. I'm basically fire and I'm pushing. It's going to recoil. I am basically feeling like I am following through and pushing towards the actual target. Okay. So that is what happens after the shot is you're following through with it. You're not giving in on it or pulling back. Okay. So follow through enables the shooter to uh, integrate, maintain, and continue the shooting fundamental before, after, uh, before, during, and after the shoot. So for me, I teach pressing towards the target and I get here and I shoot. After I shoot, I continue that follow through uh, kind of like with golf, you follow on through. I'm continuing, even after the recoil, I am still pushing towards the target, okay? That follow-through mentality, okay? All right. And we will demonstrate that in the sim den as well, so you can kind of get a feel of what we mean by following through. And then, In other words, don't retreat on it after the recoil. Keep firm, follow through, just like if you're hitting a golf ball, keep following through it and staying with it, okay? Um, the two most important shooting fundamentals are, again, aiming, because you have to have the sight alignment and correlates with the sight picture. Sight alignment is more important than sight picture. If I, from a close range, if I put this front sight on that target and I sight align it, I have a better chance of hitting that target, okay? Now, where at on that target is where we worry about what's called the sight picture, whether it's six hole, center mass, that type of thing, but you have to understand how to align your sights up first. And that, of course, is covered in our training, as well as if you're train, taking the training from a local NRA instructor, they will teach you all of that. And, of course, trigger control. So of all these things that we've learned, the hold, the breathing, everything, the, cute, the most important fundamentals are the aiming, because obviously it gun's going to shoot wherever you aim it, and then controlling that trigger. Because any little movement of that trigger that's improper, jerking or not pulling straight back, is going to move the front sight off of your target. So in our opinion, aiming and trigger control are the two most important fundamentals to be aware of. Now, as with everything, folks, always keep your gun pointed in a safe direction downrange. Keep your finger off the trigger until it's ready to shoot and keep your gun unloaded at all times until you're ready to use it. Now, being ready to use it could be what? Could be preparing you for uh, whether you're going to conceal carry it, or if you're shooting on a range, then it's ready to use. If you're doing in-home protection and you've got it in a gun safe, or if you have no persons in the home that's unauthorized to use it, everybody's trained, you have no children or anything like that, then it is ready to use at any time. So again, if you're storing it, take all your ammo out of it, take everything out of it, all store it in your safe or whatnot, lock it away. Uh, so every condition is going to be a little different, okay? So um, with that said, let's kind of go to our uh, summary of this lesson, okay? As a result, what did you learn today? You identified the different components of a pistol cartridge. We saw it, the different firing pins, hitting the primer. We saw what it was for the shell, the gunpowder, how it, it blows the actual projectile down the barrel. We saw all that, all the elements of rim and center fire cartridges. Um, explain how to properly, oh, we, we looked at the sequences of fire, right? Um, we explained how to properly identify and store ammunition how to look at and determine what you need by looking at the gun, looking at the box, looking at the actual ammo itself. Uh, we identified major types of cartridge malfunctions, uh, misfire, hang fire, squib fire, and how you would deal with those. The main thing to remember is keep it pointed for at least 30 seconds downrange in a safe location uh, because it could be just a delay, uh, but we want to make sure. All right. Uh, and again, don't just immediately start going into the breach and things like that. Give it a little time. You're in a hurry. You're in no hurry, I should say. So take your time. Be safe. And then, of course, we explain the fundamentals of pistol shooting, the isosceles triangle position, uh, bench seated position. OK, right handed. And we will explain it for left handers in the training. You should get that instruction as well. If you're a left handed, it's just reverse what the right hand was. Okay, say so all of those, the two-handed grip for the revolver, also the two-handed grip for the semi-automatic, we covered all of those 
Hopefully you understand all those and you have an instructor that's going to teach you all of those fundamentals, but just get out there and start shooting. Uh, if you're in the Northern McKinney area uh, and you wanna visit us here at the Sim Den and attend a basics firearms training class, or you want two hours in the simulator, we'll work with you, we'll put you through some different drills uh, and things like that. We'd love to have you. Again, it's not open to the public. You have to do a scheduled appointment and we don't allow more than six people at a time. Uh, and it's in our home. So again, we welcome you in our homes to be very respectful of our home. We'll be respectful of you. Um, and we'd love to have you here. Okay. But if you have any questions, you can go to our website, sim, S-I-M dash den, D-E-N dot com. And you can get more information about our training. Till next time, folks, stay safe. God bless. Till next time.